Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our next lesson on wolves and sheep. This is a model um, that explains the uh, main, main mechanisms of so-called system dynamics simulations. And these mechanisms, they are very important for our urban simulations, which we will consider later in this module. I selected the wolves and sheep model because it illustrates very well um, some interesting dynamic interactions between two stocks. And the two stocks are in this case the two populations of sheep and wolves. So this is a model from ecology. Um, to understand the interdependencies on the two uh, population sizes and their developments. The model works in um, principle in a way that we have a exponential growth function for the population of the sheep. But in parallel, we have the wolves who um, uh, try to uh, eat the sheep and their birth or their growth function depends on the, their efficiency, on their predator efficiency and the predator rate, which again um, depends on the size of the sheep population, so the number of sheep that are available multiplied by the predator rate and the predator efficiency and the number of wolves. This is the wolf's birth rate, which is again a kind of an exponential growth function and the parameters are the sheep birth rate the predator rate and the predator efficiency and and then in turn we have the the, the death rates so the sheep they die when they will be hunted by wolves and the wolves they die just because they become older so there is a natural death rate for the wolves and you see in this system dynamics diagram um, for which i use the net logo simulation model or the simulation environment how these um, different mechanisms so this, the stocks you see the sheep and the wolves and the flows, which means um, how we increase the stocks of the sheep and how we decrease it. So the increase depends on the birth rate as mentioned. And the interesting part is that the, um, the wolf birth rate depends on the sheep, the predator rate and the predator efficiency. And this is a very interesting way of making these two stocks depending of each others. We can run the simulation model as you see it in the video behind me and you um, the two curves they show the population size of the sheep in red so they grow first exponentially and after a while there are enough sheep so that the wolves the population of wolves um, increase as well but at the moment when we have too many wolves and um, they eat many sheep so the uh, population of sheep goes down and then the wolf the, the wolves they don't have enough food to um, create offspring and their population goes down again until the um, the wolves the number of wolves shrink um, to a certain amount and this gives the sheep the possibility to grow again so you have these two curves these two up and down population curves and um, which is a very nice model to illustrate these interdependencies and maybe you already have some first ideas how we can transfer this logic to urban mechanisms for example the number of people and the number of workplaces in a city they could be modeled in a similar way so if we have enough workplaces it becomes more attractive and if we have too many people um, the city becomes less attractive and so on. So you will look into this kind of dynamics in our urban simulation model. I just wanted to mention it, that it becomes clear why we start with wolves and sheep, because we want to understand these basic mechanisms. Um, 
In NetLogo, um, NetLogo is a free software that you can just download from the web. You have uh, a models library and in this library you can um, find the wolf sheep predation system dynamics model as I've used it but you can also use another model um, which I'll show you here and this is a model with a spatial representation um, means we have discrete number of sheep and number of wolves because in our first model you could have had also 0 0.1 wolves or sheep and the model still continued. In this case we have um, a certain number of sheep and a certain number of wolves and you may imagine as soon as the sheep die out the wolves will die out as well because they don't have anything to eat anymore and the whole system is empty after a while but if only the wolves die then the sheep can survive because there is no dependency on the resources for example of grass in the model. So let's look what um, happens in the model. You see um, in the first model um, the black elements are the wolf and the white ones are the sheep. At the moment when the wolves um, disappear in our discrete model then the sheep grow exponentially um, but there is also the case um, that the sheep die so that the wolf there are too many wolves and they eat the sheep the last sheep and then uh, there is no reproduction of sheep and the wolves die so you see clearly the difference between the discrete model and um, because this is not uh, continuing forever with these up and down curves they can at this model usually have one result either too many sheep or no animals at all in the system which is the difference so um, as you remember from the model theory lecture this is not um, something that's either wrong or right these are just different ways to model um, different aspects of a reality okay but um, what we are really interested in is how we can translate these um, dynamics how we can create a system dynamics model in Grasshopper. Therefore, I prepared a file for you, the uh, O2 underline wolves sheep model. So please open this definition. It's required again that you have installed the Anemone plugin. And I use the MetaHopper plugin, but the model will work also without the MetaHopper. That's just a plugin to make things more understandable for you. Okay, so um, in my model on the left hand side you see the input and control parameters for my system dynamics model. These are basically the same as you have seen in the NetLogo model. So the, the sheep birth rate, the predation rate and the predator efficiency of the wolves and the wolf death rate. So I have here the sliders to define these values and they are feeded into these components on the, in the middle in the green group box, which I will explain you in a minute. Then on the top, you see the control parameters for my um, loop components for the Anemone loop. And here you see I use two variables. These are the number of sheep and the number of wolves. And they are linked with the system dynamics model in the middle and feed back to the end loop component and we send it back to here. It's recorded again, therefore we can plot what happens over time. So since we can, uh, we have a, a model with time, even if it's a discrete time in individual steps, that's why we call a model dynamic. If I run the model on the loop start, so double click on the loop start component, you can see the same um, development of the population as we have seen it in NetLogo model. So that's first of all to prove that our system dynamics model in Grasshopper works as well as um, with the scientific tool which NetLogo is. Um, so that's the proof that everything works well in our uh, Grasshopper definition. And you see this um, 
interdependency of the two population curves of the wolf and the sheep. Good. Now let's, uh, by the way, here is um, this toggle, which you can press and this ends the loop, even if you have um, the 299 um, values, uh, iterations defined. Let's start again. You can stop the model uh, earlier. Um, let's just make one, let's finish one curve. If you now change the toggle to true, you see the model stops at iteration 75 instead of running through the whole 299 iterations. Okay, but now the core is um, the system dynamics model. That's what I wanted to explain you in this lesson. Here we have these four boxes and they contain the dynamic aspects. So the stocks, you can see here the sheep stock and the wood stock. That's very similar as we have seen it in the um, system dynamics diagram of the NetLogo model. And if you double click on this uh, expression on the component that holds this expression, then you can see something that you are very familiar with. This is our exponential growth function. I just renamed the uh, variables. So I have the sheep stock in the model in our first lesson, it was just called stock. And I have a birth rate, that's the growth rate, multiplied by my stock of sheep. So that's exactly my exponential growth function. So this um, is responsible for the increase of the number of sheep. And my wolf's birth rate, um, they depend on the number of sheep that are available, that can be um, eaten, can be used as food for the offspring, the predator efficiency, so how efficient the wolves are in hunting sheep, and the predation rate multiplied by the wolves. So in general, it's again an exponential function, but with more factors in it. Um, you see it also in the curve, so that's an exponential growth curve. Now, the interesting aspect is also the decrease function, so how we subtract numbers or number of sheep. So here my sheep stock, that's again just a different naming, sheep stock um, is the same as the sheep, is now not, um, we don't add something to it, but we remove something from our stock. And this is the stock itself multiplied by the predation rate and the number of wolves. So the more wolves we have and the higher our rate, how, um, how good they are in hunting sheep, then the faster our number of sheep will be reduced. And finally, the wolf's death rate, or the, I mean, in the end, it's a, an exponential uh, decrease function, which is more or less the same as our exponential growth function, except this um, operator, which is not a plus, it's a minus here. So we decrease wolves um, that die because they become too old, for example. Okay, so that's all that we need to understand our dynamic model. So it seems to be very simple. Here, um, the tricky thing is not to understand the formula. It's not to under, the difficulty is not to understand the whole setup because these are only a very few components. The tricky thing is really to, to think about the interdependency of our stocks and of the functions that reduce and increase the stocks of wolf and of sheep. And that's something I want to motivate you to play around with. So please um, play around with the, the, um, these parameters to control the model, observe what happens in the development of the population sizes, and also try to manipulate the expressions or add new um, expression components, making um, the model more complicated or complex in this case, and observe what happens if you can 
create something that is interesting or if you create something that is um, more or less a stable outcome. So in our case, it's an always changing outcome. There is no stable um, size of the populations, which is also interesting. And also try to imagine how you can apply these aspects to um, phenomena that you find in a city. Like I mentioned it already, the population size, the people in a city, the number of workplaces, they also need food, they need energy. So these things, they could be um, interdependent of each others because if you don't have enough food, people will leave your city. So this could be your decline function. Just think about it. We will look into these um, aspects, how to model a city instead of an ecological um, model of two populations of sheep and wolves. So we'll do this in our next lesson. For this lesson, we are at the end and please explore the model, try to understand all the elements that's crucial for our next steps um, because we use this basic setup again and again for our next models.